I decided to go for the AWS for various reasons. Uh, I'm I love mixing analog. I think it's uh, for me it's an important part of getting space and all the other things that that, that make mixes work for me. It, it, it's it's got all of that, but it's got it all in this nice compact package. Um, it sounds as good, in some respects, maybe even better than a big console because there's there's uh, there's less there's not very much noise involved. There's there's less channels, so it kind of it makes you work in a particular way. But I, it's a kind of way that I like working when I'm working on big projects with well-known acts and well-known bands. A lot, even if it's in here. I can still get the same kind of quality that I would maybe get in a bigger studio on a on a bigger SSL, but uh, now I can get that same kind of quality and sound into projects where I'm working on much smaller scale things where previously I'd have had to have done them on on lesser equipment and struggled to get up to the same kind of level. So I I, I think the main difference for me is that I can I've got a con I can get a consistency of quality across everything I do now, which is really good. What I like most about the AWS is its colour. Uh, it fits into the studio really nicely and uh, lots of people have complimented on the uh, silver faders and the dark grey background. Um, but seriously, what I like most about it is that it sounds exactly the way I expect it to sound. It, uh, I can get what I want out of it with the mix uh, if I want something to sound clean and uncoloured, I can get that. But if I want to have a, a, a much more affected, upfront, punchy sounding pop mix, I can do that as well. It's it's very adaptable, and that's uh, that's important for me because I work on lots of different kinds of music. Before I had this studio, I had a small studio uh, set up at home, which obviously I had less equipment in and. Uh, one of the frustrations for me with that setup was that I couldn't get back to things. Obviously, having a desk that's got total recall um, means that I can hop between projects quite easily with a minimal amount of setup time. It's not quite as quick as having a fully recallable digital desk, but having said that, the advantages of having an analog desk to me far outweigh those problems. Uh, and it's still, you know, relatively speaking, it's a very small amount of time that it takes to move from one, one project to another. So that's a really big plus. Uh, I mean, in comparison to how long it used to take to set things up when I was first starting out, then it's, it's, it's nothing really. It's a minor inconvenience. Uh, and it means that I can, I can have two or three projects on the go at any time, which is usually what happens. And uh, I can hop between them. Uh, easily, and they can be, you know, drastically different sounding kinds of projects. But with with the setup, the way that I've got it, I can I can easily move between them. I'm primarily um, a mix engineer. I, I get sent lots of uh, mixes from ranging from straightforward pop stuff through to uh, I, I get quite a lot of work from abroad these days. A couple of Russian projects I've been working with. Uh, some American things, and uh, from rock through to ballads, a lot of it's it's mainly mainstream stuff. But mixing is really my bread and butter. Um, but I'm spending more and more time now with the changing situation in the business, uh, going out and finding bands and and producing them basically. So, in a lot of ways, this is a, an, an ideal console for for doing that because I can do the mixing work. Um, but also, I can do. I can record. I can. Uh, I've got a Pro Tools setup. I also have a separate Logic setup where I can do my production and uh, and uh, additional sounds and that sort of stuff, which I then fly over here and 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 mix. So it gives me an, an all-in-one package. I'd say for the majority of projects at the moment, unless unless it's a, a big established band who've already had. Uh, maybe one or two successful albums already. I think uh, pretty much everybody else is is going to be having to make records, you know, by doing it this kind of way. Uh, it doesn't bode well for the bigger studios, unfortunately. I mean, those places are great places to go and make records, and uh, I still love doing that. 
when I get the chance. It's just most projects, you can't factor that in anymore. Um, so having a place like this, and I, th I think you know more and more producers and engineers are going to have to do this. I mean, it's not easy to do it, financially speaking. Obviously, you know, you have to find a way of doing it, and it's borrowing money is not easy, especially now. So I'm, I'm glad I did it when I did. But um, I think that, yeah, more and more producers are going to have to do this kind of thing because it's going to be the only way of making records up to the standard that they need to be while not having to find huge studio bills and all of that kind of stuff. To a degree, I feel like I'm making the best music uh, that, that, that I have done for a long time um, because it's very fresh and new and there's, there's, there's no there's no intermediaries involved. The, the record companies aren't, aren't uh, getting involved to the degree where you're being pushed down a particular route as to how something needs to sound or what kind of style you need to do stuff in or what kind of projects you've got to be looking for. It's, it's, that's all good. You know, the, it's, it's staying relatively pure. So when the idea is initiated, uh, that idea and that, that concept is still there at the end, whereas a lot of the time when, when there's managers and record companies and pluggers involved, you kind of find that where you started and where you end up are very different places and maybe not always for the good. So, yes, I'm, I'm very positive about the future. I mean, certainly artistically and creatively, if not financially. <laughs>